Hello. Testing, testing. Uh, I'm testing. Uh, it's a Sunday morning. Um, I'm just kind of waking up. Um, I was about to have my first jam of the day. My head's been hurting a lot all week and then it happened. I had an idea. Um, yeah, I, I, I did a couple of videos about gain staging and a couple of other bits and it seems to be of interest to some people. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'm going to start something called the Holloway Sessions. Look at that, I've even got a name. Um, so the Holloway Sessions ha is about you being a fly on the wall, hopefully, of me getting into a day. And what I'll do over the months is there's 15 to 20 tracks. Sorry, I've got a hair just tickling my nose. These are going to be walks and all videos. They'll be a bit longer, by the way. This is this bit's in brackets. Um, Oh, God, bloody hell. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, they'll be a bit longer, maybe about 20 minutes. But um, in these videos, I'm going to be d working on the production for each of the tunes that I'm going to be, hopefully, at the end of it, I go into rehearsal phase. Now, I hope that I'm fairly well rehearsed, but what I hope to figure out between now and then, I've had a lot to learn over the last uh, year. Um, I'll explain more about that in other videos. Um, but um, putting all of this together and trying to get a good sound. Now, the last bit of the puzzle happens, hopefully, over the next couple of weeks. At the moment, currently, and this is just talking li about my rig quickly for a second, what you've got going on is you've got uh, the gear, which I usually is the instrumental stuff, so my drum kits. Over here is an Octopad. Um, we've got a Nord 3P there that's not on at the moment. Um, We've got HX effects going on. We've got a Boss GT1000 going on. The Boss GT1000 is handling all of my guitar amplification, my acoustic electric. So if I use a Gibson but want an acoustic sound out of it, I use that. It processes a nylon string Godin and a five string Ibanez bass. Um, how I do that um, is getting your input levels right. Sorry, I keep having, I'm not used to. It's going to take me a little minute to get used to doing videos like this. I'll probably have a bit too much waffle. I'll get a bit more streamlined in a little bit. Um, but I've got a Gig Rig 321. Now, Gig Rig make brilliant pedals. And I don't know if you watch that pedal show, I think it's called. Awesome. Uh, great guys there. Um, but they make a pedal called a, a Gig Rig 321. Um, and there you can link up two of those if you want. Put in six guitars or you know a few guitars and a bass or even nine. Um, but I'm using it for the, uh, the guitars I mentioned earlier. Now, each input has its own um, amp if you want. So uh, I actually have all the amps on. I'm going to give you a little tip within a tip here. I have all the amps on because my bass signal, even though it's an active bass, for some reason is weaker and I need to boost it into the GT1000. Now, I'm hoping later in the year to get my hands on an awesome bass. Um, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, <laughs> my grubby mitts. And they're always fidgeting, you'll know. Um, if they've not got a guitar in there or a drumstick. Uh, and that's how I like to start my day, with a drumstick. Let's get sidetracked for a second. Let me just make sure I've got my... Now, I've not set up this um, Octopad yet with its full kit chain for live. When I finish doing this mixing bit, I'll um, I'll move to live rehearsals, by which time I should know all of the parts for all the tracks. There's quite a lot to remember. A gig, I'm hoping to get some of the tracks down under five minutes. There will be tracks at around eight minutes. And I hope to play a bit like a DJ, as in we won't be stopping between tracks. We might be stopping within tracks. We'll see what happens, how that plays out. I'm maybe getting ahead of myself there. Um, but we're, we're going to push this gear to its limits over the course, and you can join that journey with me. And that's what these Holloway sessions are all about. As I said, I like to bang a drum. But on the Octopad, you can have other sounds. On the Nord 3P, let's just get a level.
Now this is a synth, it starts off with waveforms, whereas this starts out with samples. So what I'm going to do now is go to a kit that I want to just sound check with quickly. So I'm just going to go to a basic drum kit. Uh, it's their tight drums that comes with the SPD30 Octopad. Um, I basically, what I do with most of the gear, uh, GT1000 is a bit of an exception, um, I, I basically take what they've got and then retune it, re-level it, do what I need to do with it to get it to a point where I want to use it. I find with Roland and Boss gear, it's a bit glossy, everything's a bit shiny. Um, and I'm from London. Well, not originally from Devon, but, you know, I cut my teeth in London. We like a bit of grit. So, I d yeah, so I, I will mix 808s with live kits and sambas and distorted drums. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly run through a couple of those as a little snapshot. Won't go on too long. Not as long as I'm awful. I just want to get a level. Although on the Yamaha, I'm showing that my yellow lights are just pinging on at zero dB, my loopers aren't um, peaking. So I've got a good level there. I think that was coming through at about minus six dB at the front. Now, as a, I don't know if I mentioned this already in this video, I'm waffling again. The uh, Roland Go mixer is how you're hearing this at the moment. I'm going straight from the gear. Oh yeah, I was talking about the routing. The gear goes into the mixer. The mixer, I've got separate control, so even if I turn my backing vocal mic, you can hear me coming right, hear me coming left, straight up in the middle. It's got a very different tone to my lead vocals, so they don't muddy each other, and I always separate them. My backing vocals are never right up the middle unless I, I can't think of any reason to do it um, just yet. I, I might use it at some point. Anyway, back onto here, which is a warmer sound. That cut, it still manages to cut through. I might drop some of the lower end out. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how the mix process goes, but this is my starting point. So, my straight kit sounds like... Okay, and the Nord 3P. Yeah, it's quite a fun unit, this. I'm going to go into depth on that. Myself, I've only scratched the surface, so but um, I'll show you what I did do with it. It's quite interesting. You can get some really organic sounding um, drum beats. That's what I was using before the Octopad came into my life. Um, right, so here we go. Let's try a different kit. Going to try a distorted kit now. We'll seem okay. So I'm going to move straight to what we're going to want to use. Um, and this video is about why to use two loop stations. We've got some crazy guys out there, crazier than me and Bongo Jack on the RC300 user group on Facebook. Um, God, that was a mouthful there. I remembered to say it though, um, which is a miracle for a Sunday. Um, there we go. Now, where was I? Yes. They're linking three loop stations. Like, one guy's got two RC300s, which I get, I get, I'll talk about this in a second. Um, and yeah, I get why he wants to make the leap to an RC505 and link them. Having problems with that, apparently it can't be done. Um, I wonder if there's another approach for him. I'd like to discuss that maybe in the next video. Um, we'll see how these, uh, these uh, holiday sessions go. You might think they're shit. Um, we'll see. I, this might not even make it to YouTube. I've yet to. Oh, I'm waffling again. Right, so here we go. Why? Because you can separate things. Um, on the RC300, you've got three tr three stereo tracks. You can add and remove things, but you've, you're limited with that. Um, the RC505 gives you more tracks. So think of it 
Start thinking of your looping. If you're struggling with your mix, if you're using a single track looper or an RC300, but your ideas are vast, um, and to express yourself, you like to build up texture um, and also give yourself options for how you can remix yourself on the hop, which is the beauty of this. There's no door involved. I use door production principles. There I watch a lot of uh, musician on a mission. I don't know if I'm getting into that mic right. Sorry, I'm not. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> you might think, yeah, back off the mic, Ty. stop talking, play. So I'm going to do that. So, But what I want to do is uh, start jamming a track that you might have heard me play. It's called Home Alone. Um, it's uh, a, There's basically three tracks that I'm going to be jamming to start with. They've all... Uh, two of them have been born out of me working on the production for the other, and that's the beauty of looping. You can do something in a track and you go, fuck it, there's another song there. And you can just save that session, open up a new patch from the template you've built. If you want to talk about templates at some point, we'll talk about that. But I assume if you're watching these videos, you're at a level where you know how to build yourself a template and get some of the basics up and running. But if you're not, just let me know in the comments and stuff, or get in touch via Facebook, and um, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll get you moving. Um, because I've got experience with both the units going on here, so we can share that. And there's a few of us knocking around. We're not in competition with each other. All of us are individuals doing things very different from each other. Um, but we can all share our experiences because because we're all so different. We've all got different approaches. Um, so you can see how you can reach similar results using completely different approaches. What a wonderful world we live in. Right. Mix. Gonna start with the guitar, and if you know the song, I usually use a pad here, but I'm just gonna, for the purpose of waking up in this jam, use clean sounds for the minute, and we'll just build up a jam, because I just wanna make a point. Um, let's see how we go. Uh, here we go. Okay, so a little bit of a shaky start there for me. You couldn't hear what was going on in there, um, but it worked out. We made it through the starting of the track. The RC300 was set up to uh, trigger straight away. So as soon as I start playing, I'm recording. I've got two shakers pre-recorded. I've got one on the RC doing the 16s on the 505, and the 300 is handling the, I don't know the technical term for it, but the, the four, is it? Yeah, the, probably the four. Um, I've also got pre-recorded backing vocals. Now, this is another beauty of the RC505 or 300 or whatever it is. If you're doing a session, you do something you like, you go, I can make my mix shorter and save people having to sit through. And this is what I'm working my head around at the moment is how I build my set. Because I want some of the songs to be immediate, so I will be using different ways of using the loopers. And others, I want them to be live loops. So, uh, Stop waffling, get on. So, there's already a vocal there. Can you tell the coffee didn't kick in yet? I'm gonna put the beat in on the RC300. song. Quite a lot going on here already. Um, so that went on to the RC300 track 2. So I'm using track 1 and track 2 at the moment and the shaker is on track 3. So now I'm going to put in a bit more colour to this beat. Now I am panning things left and right but only by a couple of points. I want to keep most of my beat in the middle because that is going to be the focus of my tracks actually. Uh, hopefully see if we get it right. Okay, so now I've moved to the Cuban kit. Switch to the RC505. Along. 
disorder, but we're doing things differently today. and I wanted to drop it on the 300. I've got it set up to go there. It doesn't work so well through the... We'll have another session on the differences between the two. We'll stay focused. Right, so there's a lot in this mix now. If you were using a single looper, there's a lot of mud. Hopefully if this isn't peaking, you'll hear there's a lot going on there. And you can hear all the elements still. Um, so now, GT1000 is going to come into my mix. With a bass. line that I just put in two notes with a delay right there for when I want to do a drop down I need to work on this in the mix I want it to be fuller I'm struggling to get that into the phone at the moment but um, so I'm kind of being reserved with some of my levels here so we don't be clipping hopefully this doesn't clip too much I've not checked it today as I say just wanted to walk and all get amongst it see what happens okay so the production tip I've spoken about before with the GT1000 Gone back to, uh, gone back to my Gibson Les Paul. Um, let's lose that. Where did I put? Oh, unfortunately, I put the guitar on track one, and I've already built it up. Anyway, to keep running, this guitar sound actually on its own would sound quite thin but should cut through this mix beautifully and not be blowing my uh, gain stage, importantly. Um, yeah, so although that was the wrong chord, it cuts through nice and clean. Let's bring everything back in. I got a little guitar hook that I have going. 
left and right and using the HS effects put an auto filter on to a patch I built for stereo. We'll have another session on that. But here we go. Gonna go to the RC505 now. I've got everything set up here at hand level. It takes a little longer for me to do the changes. With these pedals set up, I can do instantaneous changes. When we get to the rehearsal and my performance, I'm going to talk you through those stages. Stop talking, this is loud. Let's get going. Here comes an acoustic. Left ear. So for me, that was hectic because I'm doing things in a different order. My brain set up to do things when I'm jamming and you're not here. So it's going to take me maybe a couple of sessions to get used to that. Uh, so excuse the odd blunder and it takes a little while longer to change through things. I'm going to wrap this video up in a second. Um, I just wanted to say there's a lot in here. In a second, I'm going to bring the bass back um, and play out and then hopefully there's been some useful tips in here and uh, yeah i'll speak to you in a little minute hang on
using the two as a live mixing tool, you can create really interesting sections. I'm going to end it. So yeah. That's why you would use two loop stations. Getting a nice clear mix at the end there. Even my solo popped through. Here's my last important tip for this video, I think. It comes to mind. Getting your level right isn't always getting your level right. When you're going into your looper, get the EQs right. Make sure things are sitting in the right frequency bands. Watch people like Musician on a Mission. I've not even spoken to the guy. I've liked a few of his videos. I've watched him religiously for the last year. He's brilliant. There's a Scottish guy, I think based in Glasgow. I think he actually, he's got a name. I, I can't remember it. My head's in a pickle. I've just been in madness. Um, Check out them, learn pre-production tricks, side chaining, uh, multi-band compression tricks, things like this, how to get proper stereo. Um, I'll be talking to you about how I do it, but I learned from these guys. People like Jared helped me understand how to best set up the amps and how to use the GT1000 as a tool for the guitar. He also teaches bass, so check out that as well. So I think I'm done here. Oh, before I forget, Ben Rollins. Yeah, he's doing different music to me, but his approach is a, di is a different one as well, but he's also someone you could learn from. He's really cool, and he seems like a really nice guy. He's been in touch via messenger, or I got in touch with him to ask permission to mention him. Um, so, yeah, cool. Catch you in a bit. Hope you had a great Sunday. <laughs>